So since I've finished painting and polishing, I've uh, flipped it sideways so I can get the fuel system and the brake system installed. So I've temporarily mounted the rear axle and um, the gas tank and with these nice stainless steel straps. And um, yeah, it's gonna be it's gonna be good. So what I've got here, just so you can understand what's going on. So I, the um, the main line uh, from the fuel filler neck, the one and a quarter inch or 42 millimeter line, runs from here through uh, to the um, gas tank, and it's fairly fairly tight in. Um, and then we've got four connections um, down here. This this connection, all these have to start with rubber, um, and I'm going to transition from the half inch ID rubber gas line. Come on, focus, focus, focus. This camera, I tell you, I'm going to ditch it pretty soon. Um, let's see if I hit the. Huh. There we go. So um, it goes from the half inch ID line to, I'm going to transition to a barbed fitting, a 90 degree barbed fitting that comes out um, with a, um, a number eight line that's going to then run to the first fuel filter. Um, that will be a stainless steel line. So just a short piece of rubber transition into a barb here, 90 degree line, and then I've got this set up here. So this the cardboard represents a bracket. The bracket's going to fit, it's going to uh, offset here behind the gas tank and in front of the axle. Um, let me zoom back a little bit. So it'll sit in here. Um, it'll be a little bit curved around the back of this. So the um, you'll have, well you can see down here, I'll, you start with the filter number one. So it's a um, 40 micron filter post gas tank runs into the Weldon fuel pump 180 degree connection on the line runs into the 10 micron pump and then that runs to the front of the car so that'll sit in here and um, with the stainless lines running and then it'll come back down and out and, and down along the side of the chassis and um, um, and I will fasten it inside the frame rail here that I've manufactured. And the braking system, I'm going to run a single line off of the um, proportioning valve. And I don't have that all fabricated here now, but I'll show you in the next couple of days. But it runs along the opposite rail. It'll come in. There'll be a T here. T junction will split it, run down one side run down the other side here and um, there's the uh, flanges that they hit and then the opposing flange on the back of the trailing arm so that there will be the flex um, coupling there um, so it'll be stainless braided line hard lines hard lines here and then braided line off onto the, um, de the Scirocco disc brakes so that's kind of the plumbing so gas on one side and the brake line on the other side. And then over here, I've got the e-brakes, the emergency brakes. They used to run stock up to these platforms here on each end, which makes a mess of trying to get the exhaust system routed, which goes up through and over the axle and then across the back. So what I did is I built new lines here, and then I'll, I'll get the e-brakes run underneath the strap, around, and then to, to over the axle into, um, and, you know, I'll figure it out, but basically that's the a cleaner, it's out of the way, they're not going to be hanging down and looking like shit like they did stock. Uh, and I'm going to try to get the uh, MagnaFlow um, hush power, um, take the resonator out, the, the, the resonator that, um, the stainless resonator that, that's normally here, the bullet size, and I'm going to uh, change it to a, um, a better unit that it kills a bit because it's a straight, complete straight through exhaust and um, I want it to be a little quieter than, than, than it'll otherwise be so it's just a more um, performance oriented but it's it's also quieter than the uh, the, the stock uh, resonator that goes in there and I will just be straight through pipe through here 
and then to the straight through exhaust a Borla exhaust there. So this has got a reversion cone inside it, uh, but it's very, very high flow, so it shouldn't shouldn't hurt the power at all. Might actually make some power. There's a we have a little venturi that we've got in the header um, collector as well. So sometimes bigger is not better. So anyway, I'm starting starting this process, and I'll build this bracket out of stainless steel, 14 gauge, and then I can mount it, and then start mounting all of the um, the bits and then I can start working on the brake system too. Uh, one other thing, just come out here. Um, while I'm at it, I've taken the uh, water pump apart because I'm going to be working on um, machining this. So this is now going to be a passive system. So I will cut off the impeller here because I'm running an electric water pump and this will just be um, basically a housing to flow the water. And then I will go through and I'll grind off um, this uh, chamber and then cut this corner off and round it all off so that basically water can come in the bottom here from the electric water pump. I'm cutting off these two um, so lines that went to the oil cooler and the water uh, and the um, passenger compartment heater. And I'm routing those differently, so I'm cutting these off and, and then plugging the holes, tapping and plugging the holes. And um, as I said, just cleaning up the housing here. And then this will just become an idler pulley for um, for the serpentine system that drives the alternator. So, so there you go. So I've done all the trimming. So I've removed here the impeller, cut it away. And on this side, I've removed the uh, sort of the turbine. Uh, vortex uh, assembly so that it, um, it's just smooth the water comes in and then it'll flow through here nicely and then I've cut off these auxiliary water returns and I'm going to thread them and tap them and plug them and then I'll have the inlet for the electrical water pump um, done so that's looking good so I've built this um, stainless steel bracket to hold the proportioning, the Woolwood proportioning valve on the front uh, there of the uh, uh, booster uh, just sort of sandwiched in there with the um, master cylinder and that means I can start um, measuring and running my lines and I'll just go around because the car is sideways here um, I've got one of the old lines uh, in there just just to see where it was going originally so I'll obviously the way it works is but uh, I shall come back around this side here so the proportioning valve has uh, front and rear inputs and then uh, front and rear inputs and then rear out and then two front front out so there's a single rear line and um, I've got these nice block off uh, bubble flare uh, 10 millimeter um, block off um, uh, screws that I'll you know put 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 sealer on and although I won't need the sealer I'll put sealer on and tighten them in and then I've got uh, one line will run here just very very short just loop around and then one line will come back and go into the back section here and then I'll have one front line scoot to the firewall and then down across. Uh, the other one will will tuck in tight and just you know very short distance will run here and then I got the other one that'll go through the the slot and then run to the back um, and that'll come cruising from here through the gasket um, actually in behind the uh, control arm and sway bar mount and then through to here I'll have a T here and then the short hop to the connector here and then run down behind the gas tank you know, to the other side. So that'll be the, the brake line routing, nothing too sophisticated but uh, should get her done. And then this is my new um, stainless um, bracket for a, the fuel uh, filters and um, fuel pump. So what? I'll just pick it up and show you what happens here. This This gets put um, it tucks in right in here, 
and uh, so basically it's behind the um, the axle sway bar assembly and what's nice about this setup is that the fuel pump and filters are at the level of the um, bottom of the tank the uh, the inlet outlet so there's um, not no um, problems you know priming priming them and it's still the top I'll just set this down because it's a little awkward but um, it's still uh, the top of the fuel pumps and filters are still sort of at the level of the, uh, the sway bar. I'm not going to use this 25mm uh, um, um, solid bar, a new speed, this is one of the original new speed bars. Um, I'm going to use the Autotech hollow 28mm bar just to save some weight um, and just freshen up everything. Um, and then I'm going to try not using uh, any sway bar in the front. I've got the Bill Stein Racing um, struts and the H&R Race springs. Um, I'm worried they may be a bit stiff, but uh, I think one of, one of the things to do is run a big bar in the rear and uh, just stiff shocks and springs in the front and don't uh, don't uh, have any sway bar in the front. So we'll see how that works. I may end up building a custom bar. The, the, the reason why I can't use a stock bar in the front is that the collector, from the race 4 into one race header, is big, right? And uh, one five eighths primaries, and it's a big collector, and it sticks down. The pipes stick down, so like this crossover point here it was interference. So I can't use my four point crossover brace either. I've got the um, tectonics brace that runs between the two horns and then back to um, to to here to sort of triangulate it in, and that'll clear the race exhaust. And if I want what I can do is I can build a um, a sway bar that, that basically the mounting points are, are, are where the, the cross brace is at the front and then it, it's sort of a reverse and goes backwards instead. I had that on my original GTI. Um, it was a um, auto techniques or techniques uh, combination stress bar and, um, and sway bar in the front with spherical ball joints and fittings and stuff. It was a really nice setup. Uh, I may try to fabricate something similar if I need to put a front bar on. So, I mean, if I soften the suspension up and I don't go so stiff because I don't want to go so stiff, then maybe I'll go there. But this is going to be part of the tuning phase of the project. So anyway, we're, we're kind of 24 hours or 48 hours from getting a few more fittings for the fuel lines and brakes. And then I'm going to be able to run these lines and get everything in. So, and then I'll paint all uh, the brackets and everything that I've uh, I got to sort of clean up. I've degreased and gotten rid of all the rust on all the um, brackets for the the, the brake booster, uh, and I will then get everything all painted and all the rest of it uh, before it goes final.